Boxing legend Mike Tyson said everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. Some are other military mind of ages past. Wellington, Dwight D. Eisenhower, Sun Tzu, take your pick, said no plan survives contact with the enemy, which is saying the same thing about sudden blows to tender parts. For those alarmed by talk of punches, let me stress that I refer in what follows only to blows metaphorical and not literal. Hard-earned wisdom like that from Tyson and the rest is always worth remembering. But those words are especially relevant now. The game's afoot, as Sherlock Holmes said. No one is in overall control. Not yet, not yet, no matter what anyone says or thinks. And there's everything to play for. And I do mean everything. If you have felt increasingly angry about what is happening, then that's fine. Given the contempt with which our leaders and their would-be successors are treating us, we should be furious. But now, when so much seems lost in darkness, is the time to remember things are happening fast and faster because no one has their foot on the brake. Now is the time to hold on and remember that fortune favours the brave. The corrupt establishment received their punch in the mouth and saw their plan fall apart on contact back in 2016. Contrary to the smug expectations of David Cameron and his masters, Brexit won the referendum and the Machiavellians had to pick up their ideological teeth with broken fingers. It's been chaos ever since, chaos agitated endlessly and remorselessly by those in need of a smokescreen for their latest movements as they try and maintain control. Theresa May got in the way of Brexit as best she could. Johnson rode a wave that was there for the riding, which is essentially what he does in life in general, but was tripped up by a birthday cake and flushed away, at least for a while, and then came Truss, poor thing. And now, well, it doesn't matter really, in the same way that none of them matters. In the same way that a sock is just an empty pocket of wool and goes where it goes only on account of the foot that's wearing it. The original plan, the only plan for one world government and total control is still out there, splattered with blood, snot and spit after that straight right punch of Brexit. And also the election of Donald Trump, let's not forget, sent them reeling. In many ways, I think they're still reeling. They're clever, those globalists, but that kind of clever, stupid clever, that always leaves their kind open to what congenital oddness cannot comprehend, far less foresee or deal with, which is to say regular people prepared to stand up and say, we see you, and also, no way. Straightforward, honest tactics work well in the face of those reliant on writing computer code while tucked up in bed in their Star Wars gym jams or colluding with their similarly privileged chums to get oh so cunningly worded legislation slipped through a parliament stuffed with more of their terminally awkward sort. They're clever and also rich or with access to the rich and therefore equipped with the funds and or the contacts necessary to buy and control the media, the legislature, the judiciary, academia, the civil service, and the rest of the institutions that all smell now of weak old fish. But fear not, fear nothing but fear itself, because the foes, emboldened by the events of the last two years, revealed themselves. Many of us see them now, and having seen them, we must never lose sight of them again. We've seen them, them and their dodgy medical products, pushed and sold with downright barefaced lies. They're cheerleading for never-ending war, their climate fear-mongering. Now we see them clearly, and the fight for freedom is straightforward. It's straightforward because anyone pushing an anti-human, soulless, greedy, heedless agenda is spitting in our faces, as well as in the face of the natural order of life and of the universe itself. In Canada, poor Canada, Trudeau's Deputy Prime Minister Christia Freeland recently mouthed off about rising fuel prices being good, Good because they would remind Canadians every time they filled up their fuel tanks at the pumps about the need to end fossil fuels forever and so save the planet. How utterly economically illiterate or indeed shamelessly and knowingly psychopathic can a senior politician be? Stupid question, of course, for there are no such limits for such people. How can anyone be allowed to achieve high office without knowing that unaffordable energy has consequences that reach all the way down until they result in the hardship, starvation and death of millions, perhaps hundreds of millions of the poorest people in the poorest countries in the world? And yet she, Friedland, and others of her ignorant ilk 
in positions of power all across the West are ceaselessly opening their mouths to spout more of the same unforgivable, ultimately murderous nonsense about Agenda 30 and Net Zero. Anyone standing up to them, ready to deliver another metaphorical punch to the mouth, to their abomination of an agenda, is by definition in the right and on the right side of history. Never forget this, because the right is as irrepressible as the grass and as perennial. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but the grass always grows and right always prevails. Remember and know too that those enemies of freedom, those proponents of one world government, of digital currencies programmed to put us on a leash like dogs, of social credit scores and genderless neutered populations have a tiger by the tail, if not many tigers, and they know it. They're in the fight of their lives, we all are. And so what do they pull? Here in Britain, once Great Britain, but now enduring carefully choreographed ritual humiliation in front of the rest of the world, the enemy seeks to distract us with a Westminster-based pantomime of Z-rate actors devoid of talent of any sort. Silly hunt and hapless shaps are on stage already, talentlessly mumbling lines written for them by others, while Rishi Washi waits in the wings in another strangely tight and tiny, tiny suit and memorising whatever script he was handed yesterday. What grade of morons do they imagine they're dealing with if they think this drivel, this transparent mugging for the cameras is going to distract us long enough for them to build the digital cage around us. Anyone who's seen a panto, even a good one, knows that actors may change, but the script remains the same year after year. And all the while we're plied with bad political actors and their familiar backdrops, coaxed and cajoled into watching by compliant mainstream media, real people all over the world are rising in their millions. It's one of the great and unforgivable disgraces of this moment in the 21st century that our media pushes round the clock coverage of the rise and fall of this week's Cinderella. Out there, mostly ignored, good people are valiantly fighting for their lives and for the right to life itself. The puppet masters of the latest worn-out Punch and Judy's think they can distract us with amateur dramatics, while all around us real flesh and blood human beings our fellow travellers are breathing and sweating and bleeding red blood in defiance of totalitarians and authoritarians across Europe, in Canada and in the US, in Iran and everywhere. Iran, benighted by tyranny as it has been for half a lifetime, is home to some of the bravest of the brave. For those with eyes open, it has in recent weeks been revealed as a place that's home yet to warriors and heroes, women and men, some little more than children, willing to stand up again and again in the face of their tormentors and say no more. And while they lay their lives on the line, the mass of the craven legacy media here and elsewhere offers cursory coverage of the most shallow and lukewarm sort. How awkward it must be for them to acknowledge the rising of a population in the face of murderous totalitarian oppression when those in charge of matters in the West are driven hardest by their need to throttle and silence the very notion of popular protest and defiance. In the Netherlands, so far from Iran and so different in so many ways, it's nonetheless the same story. That scrap of a place, scraped out of the seabed in ages past by defiant men and women and transformed into an erstwhile Eden that has been the world's second biggest producer of food, is being laid low, gutted like a fish by a government captured by the dull-eyed ideologues of the WEF, a lying nonsense about saving the world by cutting nitrogen emissions, which insists upon the culling of half the national herd and driving as many as possible of the farmers off their land to make way for a megacity of 45 million souls, is unfolding just across the North Sea. And yet that same captured relic media, that sham media, completely ignores the atrocity playing out under its watch. All across Europe and the wider world, it's the same. All manner of decent, hard-working people, the products of one ancient, unique, noble heritage after another, who live and die for family, for safe national borders and distinct national identities from west to east are being disregarded by those in the service of an anti-human agenda shaped only to further enrich the bloated elites that have already benefited from the greatest transfer of wealth in all of history. Here in Britain, the Tarquins and Tamaras of Richmond and Fulham are almost fetishised by that same complicit media as they spill milk on the floors of delis in the upmarket London postcodes where they live out their pampered, four-by-four-driven, trust-fund-financed lives. Their toddler antics are reported round the clock by cash-whipped media in a blatant bid to so enrage those still watching the Beeb and Channel 4 and the rest of the knee-bending mainstream so that on cue and in line with the script, 
those unwitting will positively cheer when yet more bills are passed through Parliament to make public protest illegal while moving to censor and so control the internet and social media. It obviously makes sense to make sure the streets and squares are made devoid of inconvenient protest too. Step forward the stooges of yet another cunning plan, milk bottle and glue bottles in hand. But here's the thing, fear not, do not lose heart, not ever, but certainly not now. If it feels like chaos, it's because it is chaos, a chaos curated and pervaded by those technocrats and the rest of the misanthropic odd squad while they seek to recover from that proper crack-landed smack on the jaw by Brexit and a non-compliant population desiring peace from meddling control freaks and the freedom to get on with their lives. And when all else fails, never forget the wisdom of Lance Corporal Jones in Dad's Army, that sitcom from a world more decent. When contemplating how best to deal with the baddies, remember, they don't like it up them. <laughs>